Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Back at differential equations once again, third video in the series. And today we are going to take a look at linear homogeneous first order ordinary differential equations. First things first, let's take a look at general linear ODEs. So on the left hand side we have the nth derivative of y and on the right hand side we have this weird sum, linear combinations of solutions. So we have this y right here and we also have this a and this b. The only thing you really need to know, a and b don't need to be functions in terms of t. They can also be, um, I don't know, numbers like e or 4, it doesn't quite matter. The only real thing you need to know, if this b is non-zero, that means we are dealing with the inhomogeneous case. If this b is indeed zero, we are dealing with the homogeneous case. And today we want to take a look at the homogeneous case and also the first order. That means we have the first derivative of y on this side and the sum going from zero to zero. So all in all, we are speaking about the situation right here. Great. Now let's take a look at the theorem. So we have this function a going from some interval subset of the real numbers to the real numbers and it's a continuous function. And also we have some x0, it's also element of this interval and some constant c should be here, yeah, element of the real numbers. And our theorem states that there exists a unique solution, we are going to call it phi as always and this thing right here needs to be differentiable and it's a solution to this differential equation. And it also fulfills the initial value problem, phi of x0 equals to some constant c, element of the real numbers. And those new solutions are given by this expression right here, phi of x equals to some constant c times e to the something times an integral. That's nice and fine and it's really easy to prove, to be honest. And we want to prove something that involves a solution, so that means we have to show existence and uniqueness. And we are going to start off with the existence, it's really easy. So for the existence, um, our theorem already states that there exists a unique solution. And this thing right here is indeed a solution to this differential equation. So plug the information in and you will find out that this is true. And also, we need to show that this initial value problem exists. So let's plug x0 into this right here. So we have phi of x0 equals to this constant c times the exponential function of some integral going from x0 to x, but an integral going from a to a is just zero though. So that means we have c times e to the zero of power. This is just c times one is just c. So that's nice, we have shown the existence. And now for the uniqueness, that's not so straightforward, but it's still quite easy. For the uniqueness part, I want you guys to remember what it means for us to show a uniqueness. It just means that we can express, for example, some a new solution psi to this problem down here in a unique way. So we can express those new solutions always in the same form. So the first step is to say that we have a new solution psi. Let's assume we have one. So let psi be a solution to this differential equation down here. And now we want to play around a bit and we want to do this real smart. So what about defining a new differentiable function? We are going to call it psi naught for example. It doesn't matter what we call it. You can call it your mother if you want. So psi naught. And we are going to make it a product of this psi up here and also of some phi naught, some mysterious boy we don't know anything about now. We are dealing with this here in a second what it is exactly, but now we want to define our phi naught pretty smartly once again. So what about letting phi naught of x be equal to the exponential function of some negative integral minus the integral from x naught to x of a in terms of t integrated with respect to t. We can do this, we are just defining it. And our goal is to show that this thing right here is invertible you will see in a second why. And one thing you might notice, obviously, this phi naught is a solution to the differential equation y prime equals to minus a times y. Plug it into here and you will see that this is indeed true. Okay, great. So what can we do with this? Like I said before, we want to find out something about this psi naught. So why not differentiate psi naught? can just do it, we can play around with it. So what exactly is psi naught but prime? It's nothing other than psi times phi naught 
prime. And now we have to use the product rule. So we have to differentiate psi times phi naught and then add phi naught prime times psi to it. We know what phi naught prime is. It's the solution to this differential equation. So this right here is minus a times phi naught. And what is psi prime? Well, we assume that psi is the solution to all differential equations. So the mean we can express psi prime in this form. So psi prime is nothing other than a times psi. And that's great because on the left hand side we have a times psi times phi naught and on the right hand side we have minus a times psi times phi naught. So that means that this is zero. But what does it mean when the derivative of some function is zero? That means the function itself is constant. So that's what you can conclude. Psi naught is some constant. But what exactly is this constant? Let's take a look at the definition once again. And we haven't used one thing till now. The fact that we can plug in some x naught and see what we get. So let's see if this psi naught is also a solution to the initial value problem. So what would happen if we plug this x naught into psi naught? Well, at first we have this product right here and we are going to compose it with x naught. Well, plugging everything in, we have psi of x naught times phi naught of x naught. But what is phi naught of x naught? Well, if you plug x naught into here, then it's the exponential function of an integral going from x naught to x. This is just the exponential function of zero. This is just one. So this sneaky boy is just one. And well, we know psi is a solution to our differential equation. That means we end up with a constant c. So that's the condition right here. So on and on, our psi naught is constant and it's exactly this constant c right here. And now we want to study this constant a little bit more and see if we can do something with it. Since our constant c is just an element of the real numbers by definition, that means it can be in two states. Either it's zero or it's non-zero. So at first let's take a look at the case when c is zero. So case one, c equals to zero. Well, what does that mean? If c is zero, that also means that this right hand side is zero. That means one of those two needs to be zero. Um, can we do anything else? Well, we know that our psi is a solution to this differential equation. That means we can express it in this form right here. And it includes this constant c. That means our psi is exactly zero. So our psi is zero. I hope you can see where this comes from. And also our phi is zero. It doesn't quite matter. So psi equals to zero equals to phi. But what does it also mean? That means our phi naught is not equal to zero. So that's quite important. And the second case, c is not equal to zero. Well, what does that mean? If our c isn't equal to zero. That means that the right hand side is also not equal to zero. If a product is not equal to zero, that means both parts of this product are different from zero. So that's a nice little fact here. And especially this means that phi naught of x is also non-zero. And in both cases right here, our phi naught is not equal to zero. What does that mean? If a number, for example, four, isn't equal to zero, we can take its inverse, one fourth, the reciprocal, for example. So our huge conclusion in this step is just that phi naught is invertible. Yeah, and that's great. Because what can we do now? Well, we can divide both sides by phi naught in this equation right here. So that also means we can express psi as psi naught over phi naught. And this is just psi naught times phi naught to the minus one. But what is psi naught? This is just a constant, so that's the first step. And what was our phi naught? Well, it was just the exponential function to the minus something. And now we are taking the multiplicative inverse. That means we have the exponential function exp 
of um, the integral from x naught to x of a in terms of t dt. Just using the definition. And that's great because that means we have shown the uniqueness because we can express every new solution psi in this form right here. That's exactly the same thing that our theorem states tells us. And that's basically it. So that was quite easy to show. To finish this off, I want to place this little box right here, the proof box. <laughs> yeah, um, maybe I show you a little example. How can we use this? I was talking about the number four before, so why not use it like that? So right now that's a really simple case. We have this number four here and that means that our function a of t is just constant a of x. And well, how can we solve that? We are going to use something that's called an ansatz and that just means we are making use of this theorem right here. We just need to find out the rules later on. So we are going to assume that our y is nothing other than some constant c times e to the lambda t. If we differentiate that, that also means that y prime is nothing but lambda c times e to the lambda t. And now we can plug this information in. This is just an assumption. But it works. It works pretty nicely, to be honest. That also means that we have, if we bring this to the other side, we have lambda c times e to the lambda t minus 4 times c times e to the lambda t equals to 0. Now we can cancel the c times e to the lambda t out because it's not equal to 0. Just going to assume it. And, well, what do we end up with? We know that lambda minus 4 is equal to 0 is equivalent to saying that um, lambda equals to 4. And well, we have found out our lambda and now we can make use of this theorem because our solutions to this differential equation can be expressed like this. So what do we have? We now know that y in terms of t is nothing but. We have some constant c in this case and also we have e to the 4 times t because our lambda is just 4. And this right here is our auxiliary equations. And using initial conditions, we can also find out our constant c later on. And that's basically it. And you can plug this information into here and you might notice that this right here seriously solves this differential equations for all values of c, even complex values if I'm right. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend me if you like. If you want to support me a bit more, I'm doing all this stuff for free in my spare time, then please support me on Patreon. I would appreciate it highly. Link in the description. And if you want to see those other differential equation videos, also take a look into the, into the description. There will be um, a link to the corresponding playlist. I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and up until the next video, have flammable day. See ya. Oh, ernsthaft? Oh.